Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Baseball fans are jumping at the ballpark. So let's get in step with what's been happening in the major leagues this week. The Chicago Cubs hang on at the top. The Philadelphia Phillies come from behind to celebrate. An Oakland ovation for a teenage pitcher. A Milwaukee winning streak now a Bruin. And big league umpires even steal a scene or two. Headlines, highlights, and sidelights coming up next on This Week in Baseball. Everybody to beautiful Wrigley Field where the moon never shines and Chicago Cub fans are going wild in broad daylight. Lately, Cub fans have found everything they want right at home, except perhaps a little shade, which is why you'll always find a splendid display of hats to cover the occasion. can't hide the fans' enthusiasm. Each day brings new cause for celebration. The Cubs, number one in the National League East, are determined to hold on. Jesus charges up the defense and sparks the offense from the leadoff spot. This base hit is just one of 25 triples the Cubs have already hit, and that leads the National League. And Dave Kingman moved into the league lead in home runs. Against Houston with the bases loaded, Big Dave got his pitch. A grand slam. Kingman's expected to win games with his bat, but he's also winning the hearts of Wrigley fans for, of all things, his defense. game, fans were on their feet for Kingman and a young rookie pitcher named Dennis Lamp. Lamp carried a one-hitter into the ninth inning against San Diego. Dave Kingman in left. How about that? Another batter, another play. And Kingman does it again. Two fine plays in one inning. What more could the fans want to see? Well, have a look. How about a great effort by Larry Fittner to end the ball game? And there it is. Some still think the Cubs will hibernate in the late summer heat, but lately, all they've touched has turned to gold. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Phillies came from behind three games in a row to defeat the San Francisco Giants. Second baseman Bud Harrelson takes away a hit. The first place Giants came to Philadelphia's veteran stadium playing good defense and boasting strong pitching. Vita Blue spearheading the way was leading the Phillies in their first encounter two to one, overpowering through seven innings. But then, rookie Jim Morrison stepped up in the eighth, one man on, and Morrison lights Philadelphia's fire. The electricity was really jumping, and if one shock wasn't enough, 
pinch hitter Bob Boone immediately followed with another. Philadelphia again trailed by a run. Ace reliever Gary Lavelle on the mound, bottom of the ninth. Runners on second and third, two out, and Philly fans are on their feet because at the plate is the bull, Greg Lazinski. And the pitch, and he lines it to center field. Olay! The tying run scores. And here comes Larry Boy with the winner. Late inning fireworks again. The Giants had to wonder, was there no mercy in Philly? None. In the last game of the series, the Giants' Willie McCovey continued his clutch hitting. Old stretch tied the game with this three-run double. And later in the eighth, San Francisco went ahead four to three. But by now, we all know the plot of this week's Philadelphia story. With Gary LaBelle in relief, the Phils have just tied the score in the ninth, have a runner on third, and it's pinch hitter Jose Cardinal at bat. And he does the damage. Larry Boy again scores the winning run. And by now, they had to be getting hooks in Philadelphia. The Phillies went right on winning, threatening the Cubs at the top of their division. The winning streak had reached eight in a row when Atlanta's Phil Nico came to town. The 39-year-old knuckleballer blanked the Phillies for his fifth straight win before the largest crowd of the year in the majors. It was also Nico's second straight shutout, and that cooled Philly bats temporarily. And as for the Giants, they got back on the winning track in New York against the Mets. Yes, sir. Two great races, and they're moving right on in the National League. In the American League East, the Milwaukee Brewers Cup, or mug if you will, may soon runneth over. Early season injuries kept many regulars on the bench, making it tough for Milwaukee to get rolling. But now the Brewers have started to make their move. Center fielder Gorman Thomas is one player who's really helped. Look at him. Another is Sixto Lescano. The Sixto kid's outstanding in the field and also a 300 hitter with plenty of power. Twenty-two year old shortstop Robin Yount wasn't sure if he wanted to play baseball, but he's sure now and again putting his talents to use for Milwaukee. While Yount pondered like Prince Hamlet, 21 year old Paul Monitor wasted no time in showing the Brewers what he could do. Hit, field, and run. The rookies come on quickly, now among the top hitters in the league. And this had to lift the spirits of a much older rookie, manager George Bamberger, as well as lift the Brewers' attendance. And with RBI man Larry Heisel back from an injury, the Brewers got hot, won five straight, and gained new respect in the pennant race. Milwaukee's biggest problem had been pitching, particularly with ace left-hander Bill Travers sidelined with injury. But Travers also returned, and he's winning. The American League East better keep an eye on the Milwaukee Brewers. Out west, the amazing Oakland A's are even starting to impress Oakland fans, who've been coming out to cheer the young team along with Mr. Charlie Finley himself. A lot of folks wonder how the A's could cling to first place, but then who's to question youth's mysteries? The A's just keep moving on.
They won't frighten anyone with their power. But when they do hit a homer like this one by rookie Dave Revering, it's often enough to win a ball game because the age young pitchers can keep most any game close. The most recent upstart came straight out of high school to get a standing ovation in his very first game. 18 year old Mike Morgan. He pitched well and went all the way, getting help from his slit feeling teammates. The afternoon was not as tough on Baltimore as it appeared. Morgan did give up three runs in his professional debut, and that was plenty for Red Hot Scott McGregor, who won his seventh straight game. And the Birds won 12 straight, doing everything right. Great pitching, excellent defensive play, like this. But Baltimore has to keep pushing if it wants to get any closer to the Eastern Division leading Boston Red Sox, who've shown no signs of letting up. South of Oakland and Anaheim, the California Angels are another team which expects to contend for a divisional title. Two keys to those expectations are Lyman Bostock, now swinging a hot bat in June, and Frank Tanana, who went after his 10th win in this game against the Yankees. Thurman Munson hadn't had a hit off Tanana in 35 at-bats until this one right here, a home run that really counted. It proved to be the difference in a tough two-to-one Yankee victory. Lately, neither the Yankees nor the Angels have found victories easy to come by. When they squared off in California, they both played like teams on borrowed time. Greg Nettles, a great stab, and he gets his man. Joe Rudy speeds, and he spears it. Now Merv Redman on the run. Man alive. won a especially tough game, Yankee shortstop Bucky Dent was lost because of a leg injury, while catcher Thurman Munson had to leave after being struck by a foul ball. Munson's replacement was rookie Mike Heath, who got quite an education in only his second big league appearance. Score tied bottom of the ninth. Paul Blair tries to cut down the winning run at home. Bobby Gritch challenges Heath, who holds his ground. And now look. On the very next play, Carney Lansford challenges the rookie. Heath tags him out and decides enough is enough for one inning. Welcome to the big league, son, where everyone's got something to prove. Well, though Heath and his manager were both ejected, the rookie had won an admirer in Billy Martin. Finally, in the 13th inning, Ron Jackson settled the only score that really counts with this game-winning hit. Like we said, neither California nor New York has found many victories easy to come by. You know, you can't blame a major league umpire for turning his back at times. After all, every day he has to face another lineup of hecklers, and he always has to have an answer. An answer which is totally ignored. He's the center of attention, but only when somebody's got a gripe. Everybody's always anxious to show him the error of his ways. The pitcher thought he made the tag. He'll even show the umpire where. Often, it comes down to a game of cat and mouse between umpire and player. 
Mad Hungarian Al Raboski does his thing. The sight. Now umpire Bill Kunkel shows he can play that game too. Of course, that won't stop the Mad Hungarian. Part of the show does belong to the player, but the other part belongs strictly to the umpire. Fans think the umpire can't even read an eye chart. Try reading this one. All umpires' calls are bad if they go against your team. Then it's all a matter, as Shakespeare said, of words, words, words. Here are some immortal words spoken in the heat of historic baseball conflicts. It's a baseball dialogue that never dies. But the last word always belongs to the man in blue.
just unbelievable. Yes, it is. Uh, it, this is exciting baseball. Well, umpires do their part to make baseball exciting, all right. But so do performers like Ron Guidry, this week's recipient of the Gillette Special. The Yankee left-hander shut out the A's to win his 10th game of the year without a loss, lowering his ERA to 1.57. Rapid Ron had also won 20 of his last 21 decisions, clearly making him baseball's hottest pitcher. Congratulations, Ron. And that's it, folks, for this week in baseball.